Hey, it's Andrew Huang. We're gonna be looking at all these MIDI keyboards today. We're gonna find what the best one is, if there is a best one. I'm also here with my friend Grant Stinnett, who's gonna give his opinions too on these keyboards because we come from kind of different backgrounds. So I have classical piano training, been producing music for years and years and years. Grant, maybe you can... <laughs> That sums up my, my experience. Yeah, I mean, an amazing <laughs> producer, but also newer to it and no piano training. Yeah, yeah. But you, you use MIDI keyboards all the time. You, you can't live without them in the production world, whether it's you know any style, but I'm constantly using them, so I'm actually kind of learning fast. So what we want to do today is uh, I'm going to blindfold myself and Grant's going to set me up with all the different keyboards we're looking at just to kind of get as objective as possible an idea of what the pads and knobs and keys feel like how I chose the keyboards was basically what are the cheapest ones that have knobs and pads? Just because I find I use those elements a lot. Let's do the blind test. Huh, okay. So the first thing I'm noticing is the consistency of the velocity response is not really there. It feels not ideal. <laughs> These keys are a little more stiff. I think I know this, which one this is because this feels like pretty full size keys. Maybe it's just coming from the smaller one to this one. Like that is a large key. <laughs> <laughs> the velocity response is great on this. The only thing is playing softer feels a little bit weird just because of the slight firmness to the keys. Huh. So far, I like this one the most. It feels the best to play. The keys seem to be an in-between size. Like, I know they're not full size, but they're not, like, tiny. That's the winner so far for keys. The keys feel the, the weird, like, the flimsiest, but they respond more nicely than the other small ones that I've played. So I know which one this is immediately because of the weird keys. Maybe it's just me as a piano player. It's really, it's weird. Clickety clack. These are quite uh, shallow, so there's not as much travel to hit the note. And I think the feedback you get from it is just less tactile, you know? Right. But you're still getting velocity. Yeah. It's interesting. Oh, gosh. Hmm, okay, hmm. These are the shallowest piano keys. Having less room to, to travel, I think, affects the expressiveness that you can impart. Sometimes hitting it lightly, not getting as much of a trigger as I want, or sometimes not at all. These are small pads. Yeah, they work. They're just they're just small. But because of that, you can fit more of them on the keyboard, I guess. So, pluses and minuses. These feel a little bit better, like more responsive. More of the surface of the pad feels usable, whereas the other two had quite a difference between the middle and the corners. These are among the stiffest ones. I have to press harder to get a uh, full velocity. Also quite stiff. Seems like the most amount of space between them of any of the ones we've tried. It's a small thing, but getting around to the different pads, it just feels slightly more awkward to perform on than if they were closer together or in a grid. These are decent on sensitivity. The largest feeling so far. This is probably the second place. So we've decided that uh, blindfold's gonna come off for the knob test just because there are so many things you can assign a knob to that doing the responsiveness test and all that kind of that way, I just don't know if it really makes sense or is gonna help much. And knobs are so pretty anyway. You don't look <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just gonna start getting into like kind of review time now. We'll start with the knobs and then Grant and I, I think we'll both weigh in on like our Thoughts on build quality, the number of features, all that kind of stuff. Let's get into knob time. Sounds so weird though, knob time. Yeah, like... no, not good. <laughs> um, these are continuous encoders. I noticed that. Every other knob on every other controller we've looked at 
has a, a start and an end. But as far as like what they feel like, I think they're they're solid. They're not like, oh my gosh, this knob. But they're not like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Honestly, it's on just, some of my hardware know, synthesizers, actually, I'm like, that, well, that now, is a now nice that, knob. Now that I do that, it's like, actually, that's really smooth. Probably the biggest difference that I can see just right off the bat is these ones are all shorter. So you're kind of grabbing yeah. the end of these three. Yeah, these, the M Audio, the Novation, and the Akai have the shallowest knobs. Probably, you know, in a minute way, a little less enjoyable to work with there. Another thing we should note, eight knobs, eight knobs, eight knobs, eight knobs, four knobs on the Elisis, mm. and 16 Yikes. on the Arteria. Mm. So let's just talk about the pitch and modulation wheels on here, because uh, the Arteria one has these flat touch strips, which yeah. are good in some situations and not so good in others. Like, I like the feel of the wheels a lot of the time, but when they're flat, you can do really quick things with them that you can't as much with moving right. a wheel that has resistance. It's worth noting the Elisis is the only one with the wheels, which right. is like kind of the traditional pitch and modulation controls. All these other ones have come up with something else, like the Korg has the XY. Having worked with things like chaos pads before, I really like this. Yeah, I think yeah. I would like it more than the joystick where you I have agree. different amounts of resistance at different points. Right, because you could just touch there and there, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. With the Novation Launch Key Mini, they don't have pitch or modulation uh, right. as a dedicated functions. Because of that, none of these knobs like go back to the middle like the, the joystick or anything. Yeah. So if you wanted to do a pitch thing, there's not really a way to do it and have it always go back to center, is there? And then the M Audio has like a slight step up from that where you have these buttons for a pitch bend and a right. mod, but it's just, I, I don't think that would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> yeah, it's a little funny. I mean, it's its there. That's better than, than not having it at all. Few of these don't have a sustain pedal plug in. The Novation does not, the M Audio does not, and the Korg does not. So if you're looking to play like traditional piano stuff with a sustain pedal, or sometimes it comes in handy with orchestrating stuff, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's on the Elisis, it's on the Akai, and it's on the Archeria. A couple of them, the Korg and the Akai, have some bonus features, like they both have arpeggiators, the uh, Korg has some easy chord and scale modes, and then the Akai has a note repeat. It's the only one with a note repeat. The M Audio has the most keys. Everything has two octaves, but the M Audio has two and a half. One thing to mention is uh, the Korg has Bluetooth. None of the other ones have Bluetooth. Seriously? So you can have wireless control. talk about build quality. I feel like Alesis and Archeria and Korg, I mean, this is a weird one. Yeah, it, it, like, that one looks like you could run over it with a car and it might still work. <laughs> Whereas yeah. everything else, it kind of looks like, it's like you're gonna break knobs off and stuff. Yeah, I don't know, I feel good about the Archeria one. The Alesis as well yeah, has is... a good, like the plastic seems like a slightly higher quality. Okay, yeah, so these two are, are the heaviest. Yeah. And this one's got like a full metal bottom on it. These three just, feel cheap when you pick them up. If you want something that's light, this is nice. Yeah. But I feel like I could smack it on the table and break it in half. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about price. Uh, I was genuinely shocked at some of these prices. After getting to know these keys and seeing which ones performed better in different areas, mm. um, let's go from most expensive to least expensive. We looked all around the internet to find the best prices we could in American dollars. The Korg Nano Key Studio is $129.99. Now that actually kind of makes sense because this is the only one with Bluetooth. If you cut out that feature, then maybe it would be exactly the same price as everything else, I don't know. Yeah, it's also, interestingly, the smallest one, most portable. Yeah. The Innovation Launch Key Mini is $99.99. The Archeria Mini Lab Mark II is $99 even. And the Akai MPK Mini Mark II is $98.94. M Audio comes in next. The best price we found for this was $92. And then amazingly, we were both yeah. astounded. The Elisis V25 is $79.95. I'm really surprised. The feel of it quality wise, it feels like it's among the best. Uh, it's got full size keys. It feels like a studio piece of equipment or a composer's desk piece of equipment. 
instrument, not yeah. like you know, not like something you take and you put in your bag and you're going to throw it around. Mm -hmm. So you would think that like this is the most expensive one and it's the smallest. Yeah, and this is the cheapest, the cheapest one. one. It's the biggest. So yeah. maybe a lot of the cost actually has to do with fitting the components into smaller spaces. Maybe I don't so. know. So what would you buy if you only had 120 bucks to spend? I think out of all of these. I would go with the Arteria because I'm not the type of person who uses a lot of the extra features like the transport controls or the um, or like arpeggiator and stuff like that. I'm, I'm comfortable just doing that kind of stuff on the laptop. So for me, having the best playable keys um, in relatively a compact package, even though the drum pads were laid out the weirdest, everything here is usable. What about you? It depends on what I want to do with it. I mean, if yeah. I want to do what you're doing, like the electronic music thing, mm -hmm. then it would definitely be the Arturia because mm -hmm. of those benefits you talked about. If it were traveling, it would definitely be the Korg, because yeah. especially the Bluetooth, but also the fact that I can fit it in my computer bag. Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing my classical composer thing and making film scores you know, in my, in my room, it would be this, because this just feels like you're working on a full a full size thing and it's got the things that I that I need and want like these wheels and these being solid. So yeah, it's it's like it depends on the job. We're nitpicking a lot. <laughs> Every one of these MIDI controllers you could totally use for what 99% yeah. of what you want a MIDI controller to do. So to thank you for helping me out with this video, I want to yeah. give you one of these, of course, <laughs> and uh, for the, the rest of them I'm going to include in a giveaway. Details about that in the description. Thanks for sticking to the end of the video. You're uh, on the spot now. You're going to pick one of these. Because I have a studio keyboard and I'm looking for something that I can just use anywhere, like in a coffee shop. Yeah. I think I might, um, if, if you're okay with it. Oh yeah. I'll go with this this little yeah. tiny so one. Yeah, so you're, you're right now looking for like the most portable thing you can. Yeah, and this doesn't have this, the sustain pedal. It's got a button here for sustain, but it's, you know, it's missing yeah. some things. Like but also mountain, like, you're not gonna bring a sustain pedal to an airport or a coffee shop. Actually and, like, I would. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Korg Nano Key Studio wins for Grant, and uh, the other five of these keyboards will be in a giveaway. Details in the description. Do I get to enter for the giveaway as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously? No. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. And once again, like any MIDI keyboard will do, the law of diminishing returns really comes into play early when you're dealing with a device that kind of does a pretty simple thing. But for the people like us who like to get really nerdy about gear and our workflow and everything, hope uh, our insights here were helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and like if you haven't already, and I'll link to Grant's channel as well. So uh, check him out, great music content. All right, bye.